The muscle relaxant properties of Amel are fantastic for butt stuff. <laughs> I've got a tattoo of it on my chest as a homage to my community because I know that it brings people together. There's no real reason to be banning this. This is your, your classic bottle of poppers of ammo. Um, so the brand here is Double Scorpio, it's out of the States and this is a peppermint and eucalyptus blend. Just unscrew it and have a whiff. Here in Australia it's called Amyl because it's based off the chemical compound, Amyl Nitrate. Um, but in North America and in Europe they're called Poppers, marketed as a VHS head cleaner, a leather cleaner or um, a room odoriser. It's a muscle relaxant, it dilates your blood vessels and it gives you a beautiful, lovely, smooth high for 30 seconds. I lost my virginity um, after having a whiff of amyl, and trust me, it was a very good decision. It helps break down those barriers between you and your partner, and you don't need it every time. Um, it's not a drug of addiction by any means. When I heard the, the ban came out, what I first thought was, oh, here we go, they're completely ignoring that there are, there's an entire group, mainly queer people, that will be affected by this ban. If you want to get a hard on, like they'll regulate it to the nines. They'll let you have whatever you want. You can get injectable Viagra. Um, but for a quick 30 second high that can help you take a dick, they just say, no, tough luck. I think it's ridiculous. In terms of the scientific evidence around the risks that poppers place on individual health, it's, it's very sparse and it's not terribly convincing. So actually my colleagues and I a couple of years ago undertook um, what we call a systematic review. And the first thing that was really clear in that process was just how little robust empirical research had been conducted on the effects of poppers. While there have been a few studies, highly publicized studies, that suggest that poppers may, for example, affect your eyesight, we should not base public health policy on small studies, what we might call anecdotal evidence or case reports. These are the weakest and least effective form of evidence. So the UK attempted to issue a broad new set of legislation. In a famous beautiful moment, one of the members of the House of Lords stood up and said, I'm a pauper's user, no, I can't support the law for that reason. So I'm out myself um, as a pauper user and would be directly affected uh, by this uh, legislation. As a result, they ended up walking back those laws. Maybe not as a direct result, but certainly that was part of a conversation that helped to normalize use. We have examples of this approach around the world. So actually, Canada, the country I grew up in, they just, out of the blue, made poppers illegal to buy or sell. It most often just drives people's practices underground. Before the ban, we used to carry the poppers behind the counter through a, a glass and we would show the different kinds that we would have. You can see here the many different kinds that we used to carry. Obviously, now it's not the, the case. We don't sell them anymore. For me personally, it's, I didn't really hear much about the changes coming before they actually came. The health department came and they seized everything we had. It was a bit of a surprise. I've been working at the store for 17 years. We have a, a sign saying that we don't no longer sell poppers. From the fact that I get asked almost every day, I don't think many people had actually stopped. I would say no, they haven't stopped using them. Just like if people do other things like drinking or smoking, it could be done in a way that's very moderate and not necessarily dangerous. So at the end, it becomes a personal choice and um, the responsibility of each individual. As is so often the case with prohibition of drugs of any kind, making them illegal very rarely addresses the, the potential problems that we might associate with their consumption. If the government insists on making this a big deal, then they need to do it properly, and they need to follow due process that, you know, is the basis upon which we, we build health care. And Australia does, usually does a really good job of this, so I hope that, you know, calmer heads prevail.
And it's got incredibly important cultural importance. It's been present at every moment of celebration, of queer celebration. You know, at the day of the yes vote, we had a whiff and celebrated. I'm not a criminal for, for sniffing this, for needing to have it for anal sex. I don't want to be getting it from drug dealers where I could be exposed to other drugs. I don't want to be getting it from someone I just met on a dance floor. I want to know that the product I'm getting is quality and that's what you currently get through retailers.